The gospel for this Sunday is taken from St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 13. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. Jesus then asked them, What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short. Sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all these things that have happened the last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all people. But our leading priests and our other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped that he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. And this all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing and they had seen angels who told them, Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see and sure enough, his body was gone just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, you find it so hard to believe that all the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus at, and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he was going on, but they begged him, Stay the night with us, since it is getting late. So he went home with them, and as they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly, their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus. And at that moment, he disappeared. They said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven disciples and the others who had gathered with him who said, The Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus told the story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they recognized him as he was breaking the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Christ is risen. Christ is here. He is here indeed. And he's the one who is speaking to you this morning. He is the one who has awoken you from your sleep this morning. And he is the one who will give to you his life, his grace, his mercy, his strength, his spirit as we come to worship him and then here at the table receive him, his true body and his true blood. So come, Holy Spirit, for Jesus' sake, just like the two unto Emmaus, and make us aware that Jesus is here, speaking, leading, guiding, you know, making us drawn close to him so that his life is alive in each one of us this morning. For I ask this in his name. 
Amen. Again, my sermon is taken from the second reading, the book of Acts, where we hear this phrase, and when the people heard Peter's message. So as I've already told you, my text for the sermon is actually the conclusion of Peter's sermon. This morning we don't get to hear it. All that we get to hear is the response of those who heard the preacher, who heard Peter take the scriptures and open them up the scriptures and teach and preach Jesus to those who were listening. And we hear that when the audience heard this message, their hearts were cut. Their minds were persuaded. And together, those in attendance cried out, What shall we do, Peter? What shall we do? We want to know what to do because we hear about Jesus this morning. Literally, they were at a place and a space in their life where their lives were open and they became aware that Christ is risen. What shall we do, Lord Jesus? You are here. You are speaking to me this morning. You are speaking to us this morning. And Jesus, speaking through Peter, gives clear direction to those who cry out, What shall I do? He says, Repent. Be baptized. And then, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that I, Jesus, give to you. That is the right biblical answer. We've grown up hearing that over and over and over again. And maybe those words are, you know, have become dull to our hearing. So let me put it another way. When we say within our midst, repent and be baptized, and be open to receive. It just simply means make sure that your life is oriented to Jesus. Every hour, every minute of every hour, make sure that Jesus, the crucified and the risen Savior, is all my focus in life. And I can know that this will happen because as a baptized believer, that is when I was oriented, when I was turned to Jesus. And as I keep focusing on Jesus who's present, I will receive from him the forgiveness of all my sins. And then he also says, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's not a complex sentence. It's not a complex direction. It's not filled with a lot of, well, what does this mean and what does that mean? Jesus is very straightforward. What is, my, what is the response that he is expecting? The congregation in Peter's day who's asking, what shall we do? He's just expecting that they in faith will look to him, keep their eyes on him, will live their life for him and receive from him those two gifts which are absolutely necessary for life. The forgiveness of all your sins and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life. When Peter finished his message and those who asked, what shall we do, asked that question, What's amazing maybe for us today is the response, the numbers. And those who accepted Peter's message, they numbered 3,000 people. Three days after Easter, literally within the first week of Easter, the church grew from 120 to over 3,000 people. And I'm not here to talk about church growth or numbers. What I'm wanting us to hear this morning is that when Jesus is here speaking to us like the early church, 
He is anticipating a response from you. It is not I who am preaching. It is not my opinion that I'm giving to you. But we boldly believe and confess that Christ is risen. Who is here among us this morning? His name is... Where is he present? He is present here in the pulpit. He's present here in the liturgy. He's present here in the prayers. And when we come to Holy Communion... Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And he's anticipating that we will have a response to him. So please, this morning, do not go to sleep in your spiritual spiritual walk. Do not become, as Pierre Burton reminded us, comfortable in those pews that you sit. Do not be swayed after this trend or that trend in the 2014 as we learn to follow Jesus. Instead, he is here this morning asking you to give a response to him. I am calling you to follow me, Jesus says. What will be your response? May it be in the words of what we've heard Peter say, you will repent, you will believe, and you will be open to Jesus' forgiveness of sins and the anointing of the Spirit that he gives to those who hear and accept his message today for us, for you, for me. Amen. Come Holy Spirit and now move us in a personal way to give testimony to our response to Jesus today as he asks us, what shall we do when we know Jesus is calling us to follow him? Let us, Holy Spirit, stand and make a confession of faith in him. For I ask this in your name. Amen.